One of the most common things I see missing from indie FPS games is juice or game feel. Adding this extra element to your game will give you an extra sense of dynamic movement and energy, and just improve your overall gameplay feel. We'll be going from this, to this. We'll start off with a basic FPS controller using a modified version of the Character Body 3D template provided in Godot 4. However, these methods can be adapted to any controller. For this bare-bones character controller, there are two important parts to this setup. A Node 3D, which we'll call the Cam Holder, and another Node 3D that we'll call Weapon Holder. We put the camera and weapon holder in the Cam Holder and make sure their transforms are all at zero so they line up. I'm going to drag the Sketchfab model into the Weapon Holder. Since the forward direction is negative Z in Godot, we'll have to rotate the arm 180 degrees. We'll switch the camera preview on to line up our weapon holder. Adjust the position values as you need. Now we'll create a new script on the root player node using the character body 3D as a template. Godot should automatically populate this with basic controls, which we'll modify. Go into project settings and input map. Add your WASD inputs by typing a name for them. You can name these inputs anything. Once that's done, click the plus icon to assign the actual buttons to the input. Just press the button and Godot will automatically listen to the input. Back in the player controller script, I'm just going to go ahead and change the speed value from a constant to an exported variable, which will make it visible in the inspector if we need to change it later. Gotta update all the instances of the previous spelling though since it's case sensitive. Next we'll update the inputs with our newly created inputs. Back in the 3D view, let's add a world environment node and a light node by clicking the three dots at the top of the screen. Now if we test out the scene, we can move directionally, but we don't have a way to look around currently. Let's add some exported variables, our camera reference, a camera speed, and a camera rotation amount. We'll add a built-in function called input with an event parameter. This function only gets called when the game detects an input event, and we can check for mouse movement specifically. The simplest way to add camera movement is to add the event relative value multiplied by our camera speed variable to the rotation axis. So to rotate our camera up and down, we rotate on the x-axis, and since we look up and down by moving our mouse up and down, we have to add our event.relative.y value to the camera's rotation.x value. This value is measured in radians, meaning in terms of pi. We can add a clamp to this up and down rotation to prevent the player from bending over backward. To turn our character, we have to rotate the root character body 3D node, so we use self.rotation.y and we add the event.relative.x value since we turn left and right using left and right mouse movement. Notice that in the script we're actually subtracting our event.relative values from the rotation values. That's just because the rotations are calculated counterclockwise, whereas our inputs are negative to the left and down and positive to the right and up. After the rotations, we'll store our event.relative value into a vector2 mouse input variable, since we'll need that data later. In the ready function, we'll just add this line to hide the mouse and keep it confined within the game window, just to make it cleaner. Let's go and assign the camera holder node to the cam variable in the inspector. Turn the cam speed value real low and we've got look controls. But right now it's lacking a little something something, so let's add some dynamic motion to this. We'll add some more variables to control the weapon sway and rotation. This will help add some feeling of weight to the player since the arms shouldn't be locked to the camera 100% of the time. We'll create a reference to the weapon holder node and some variables to control weapon sway and rotation amount. Let's add a variable to store the default weapon holder position and cache it in the ready function. We'll create a new function called cam tilt, which takes in a float input and a float delta. We check first if there's a camera holder to effect, and then rotate its z value based on the player's left and right input which gets multiplied by the cam rotation amount variable. We're using a lerp to linearly interpolate from the camera's current Z rotation to its new intended Z rotation. You can multiply delta with whatever number you want, smaller numbers being slower to lerp and vice versa. Don't forget to add the new function in the physics process function and pass through our input dir, dot x, and delta. Now we've got a bit of camera tilting. Adjust this to your liking as some people may find too much to be disorienting. Now we add a new function called Weapon Tilt, which also takes in the same float parameters as before. You could technically combine these two into one unified function, but I like to just separate different things. 
Again, we check if the weapon holder node exists and then rotate its Z rotation to the X input multiplied by a specific weapon rotation amount. Next, we'll add a weapon sway function that just takes in a float delta value. Remember that mouse input value that we saved from earlier? We're gonna use it now. We'll constantly lerp the value to zero because I found that otherwise the weapon rotation will never go back to its default rotation. We'll lerp the weapon holder's X and Y rotation by our Y and X mouse input respectively, multiplied by a weapon rotation amount. Note that since we're sharing the weapon rotation amount variable between this and the Z rotation, you may want the flexibility to customize their individual rotation amounts, in which case you can just create another variable specifically for the Z rotation. For this example, I just added a multiplier to the Z rotation since it's less affected by the mouse input. You may want smaller values for the X and Y rotations. As you can see, we now have weapon sway when aiming, and it's already beginning to feel a lot more polished. But wait! There's more! Let's add weapon bob during movement to emulate footsteps if you don't have any walk animations for your weapon. Add a new function called weapon bob that takes in a float velocity and a float delta. In Godot 4, you can specify a type for a variable by using colons followed by the type. This makes the autocomplete more accurate and can prevent some type-based errors. Check if there's a weapon holder in existence. Then if our velocity value is greater than zero, meaning we're walking, then we'll lerp our weapon holder's x and y positions to their default values plus a value derived from a sine as time continues. There's a really great video explaining sine and cosine functions in greater detail by Taro Dev. But basically the sine function will give you a value between negative 1 and 1, alternating between them in a wave-like pattern, which is great for simple walk patterns. We plug in time.getTixMsec to have it continuously update as physics process gets updated. We can multiply that inner value by a bob frequency to increase how often it bobs, and multiply the whole thing by a bob amount to change its amplitude. We'll lerp our weapon holder's X and Y positions to these values to make it smoothly transition. If we stop moving, then we simply lerp back to their default values. And now we've got a simple walk animation without having to manually animate the model. The best part is that it's completely customizable and you can use it for any weapon without having to make additional animations. Onto the shooting. We'll be using curves to simulate weapon recoil without creating brand new animations. Obviously this method won't work for every game and handcrafted animations would beat it out, but this can add a little extra oomph to your existing models. We'll create a gun script that extends Node 3D and add several variables. They're basically just a bunch of curves. A recoil rotation curve for our X and Z axes, and a recoil position curve for the Z axis. We'll also add a Vector3 recoil amplitude, which we can use to adjust the impact of the recoil without having to redraw the curves. Let's add a target rotation and a target position Vector3s, as well as a current time float. In our ready function, we'll just save the target rotation.y as the weapon's current rotation.y. Remember that we had to rotate it negative 180 degrees, which is why we won't be changing the value. We also set the current time to 1 so that the recoil doesn't happen when the game starts. We create a new function called apply recoil, which we can call whenever we fire. When this function gets called, we'll set our target rotation and position values to the zero position on their respective curves. We also set the current time to zero. The idea is that as the game updates in the physics process, we add delta to the current time, and then update the target rotations and positions to their new values on their respective curves based on the new current time. Therefore, we smoothly go across the curve value that we define in the inspector. This line at the top will simply add a random multiplier to the z-axis rotation, flipping the curve upside down with a 50% chance. This just adds a more natural feeling to the recoil. In the physics process, we'll check if the fire input is pressed, and if so, we can call the apply recoil function. You can also add this in the input function if you don't want it in the physics process. Like I explained, as the current time increases, our weapons positions and rotations will lerp to their target positions and rotations, which will in turn get updated as they scan along the curve via the current time value. We add the gun script to the gun model. In the inspector, we'll create a curve and set its values. Set the min value to negative 1 and the max value to 1. Feel free to experiment and see what patterns suit your game. Note that you can open the points drop down to have a more accurate control over the curve points by typing their x and y values directly. I then save this curve file so that I can just reuse it and the other curves. The neat thing about the curves is that since they're between the values of negative 1 and 1, we can just multiply them by our recoil amplitude to adjust their actual output. 
And so now with just a little tweaking, we've got a pretty good recoil function that feels pretty natural without having the hand animate it. As a final piece, let's create a camera shake script. I won't go into too much detail with this since the script is basically just taken from this other video by Pefeper. Pefer, Pef, Pefer. So I defer to his explanation as he does a more in-depth job. Essentially, this script has a function that adds a camera shake which will add to our camera 3D. We add the class name camera shake at the top of the script so that we can assign it in the gun script via the inspector. Then we just call the camera shake function in our apply recoil function to really hit home the power of the shot. One last note is that if you want the weapon sway to be inverted, meaning that the player will turn the gun to the direction they are aiming instead of being delayed, you can just add a boolean check and multiply the weapon rotation amount by negative one if it's inverted, as you can see here. What comes next is just some additional visual effects and sounds, but I'll leave that to your imagination. I hope this video helps add some dynamism to your FPS games and give it some juice. Thanks, and have fun.